problem 6.1-2. Find the bending stress at point A. Here's a beam, simply supported, with a triangular shape distributed load. And point A is shown here at a distance of 2.25 meters from the left side. We're also given the cross-sectional shape. It's an I shape. The dimensions are given, and we see that A is right at the top of the shape. Let's do this problem. Previously, in problem 5.1-2, we calculated the equation for the internal moment in a simply supported beam with a triangular distributed load. We got a function for moment in terms of x as shown. We can just apply that function now to this problem to calculate the internal moment at point A. So plugging in values for W0 equal to 2.5 kilonewtons per meter, L is the length, 3.5 meters, and x is 2.25 meters, the location of point A, we get a value for our moment equal to 1.925 kilonewton meters. It's positive. Next, we need to find the moment of inertia for our I-shaped cross-section. Okay, to calculate the moment of inertia, I'm going to use the parallel axis theorem. And to use that, I'm going to take our I-shaped section, and I'm going to divide it into three rectangles. Uh, the two flanges are each a rectangle, and the inner web piece is also a rectangle. And I've already drawn the neutral axis on this section. I know where the neutral axis is because it is vertically symmetrical. So that means the neutral axis is right in the vertical center of the cross section. So I'm going to begin by finding the moment of inertia and the AD squared value for piece 1. Okay, I have the moment of inertia for piece number 1. It's base times height, the height cubed, divided by 12. The base dimension is 175 millimeters. I've written it as 0.175 meters because I'm going to need this in units of meters to the fourth power uh, to calculate stress. So the base is 0.175 meters, the height is 0 0.014 meters, it's cubed, divided by 12. The area is just the base times height. The value for D1 is shown on the diagram. The distance, uh, D1, D1 is the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid of piece 1. We can see that the distance uh, from the neutral axis to the top of the beam is going to be half of 250, or 125 millimeters, then minus 7, that's half the thickness of the flange, minus 7 millimeters will give us 118 millimeters, or 0.118 meters. We square that. This term, then, is for piece 1. Now, if we look at piece number 2, uh, we see that the values are identical to piece 1. The moment of inertia is the same, the area is the same, and this value for D2 is also the same. So uh, what we can do is just multiply this by 2. And now we'll add to it the same two terms for piece 3. Okay, the moment of inertia for piece number 3 is the base times the height cubed. The height is 222 millimeters. That's the 250 millimeter total height minus 14 for the top flange and minus 14 for the bottom flange. And the area is the area of the rectangle uh, for piece 3. And the D dimension, you notice I have written 0. That's because the centroid of, the, of rectangle 3 is uh, at the same point as the neutral axis. So the distance from the neutral axis to the centroid is 0. So this term here is going to be 0. And altogether, we get a moment of inertia for the cross-section equal to this value here. Now we can calculate the stress, the normal stress, or bending stress, at point A. And to do so, we're going to use this equation. Bending stress is equal to negative the internal moment times the dimension y divided by the moment of inertia. Now the moment we calculated above. The moment, the value of the moment is 1.925 kilonewton meters or 1,925 newton meters. This variable y is the distance from the neutral axis up to the point we're evaluating stress. And we're evaluating stress here at point A. That distance is half of 
250 millimeters. And I'm going to add it as 0.25 meters divided by 2. That's our, going to be our dimension y. And it's positive because we are going uh, above the neutral axis. The moment of inertia was calculated above, and it gives us a value of negative 3.11 megapascals. And the negative sign means that at point A, it is feeling compression. And uh, because we have a positive moment, that is going to be true. We feel compression on the top of the beam. The bottom of the beam uh, will f would feel the exact same stress. If we were to find a, a stress here at a different point, if I call that point B, it would be the same magnitude of stress, 3.11 megapascals, but it would come out positive. It would be uh, in tension. And, the way, and what would change in this equation would be we would put a negative sign on y, because we'd be plotting y below the neutral axis. And we're done.